making magic items for 5th edition D&D. There's nothing interesting in this book. Nothing suits my players. I don't want to break my game. Gold is so useless. Do these complaints sound familiar? Well, with the help of this handy magic item creation guide, your players will be busting to get back to town to spend their loot as soon as possible. The purpose of this guide is to help dungeon masters playing 5th edition D&D to create magic items tailored to their players without having to add complex explanations to each item, how they work and what they can do. These rules are based around existing rules in the player's handbook and if questions arise relating to the interactions or minutiae of them, please refer to the core rules and adjudicate them accordingly. This table should be used to refer to the power scale of an item and thus inform you of the appropriate statistics to give an item. Depending on how you treat gold in your setting, you may want to halve or double the prices here. In your setting, you may want items to be strictly controlled by what you choose to allow players to buy, or you might allow players to ask for commissions from a magical blacksmith or arcane academy, or even make the items themselves. Spells cast from items only require the item to be at hand, Spells still require the same casting time or action type, but do not have verbal, semantic or material components. However, if there is a gold cost associated with the material components, you must supply them for the spell to work. Spells also need to be concentrated on if required. As you can see in this table, magic item prices are listed according to their spell level. They also have spell attacks and spell DCs in relation to this level. The simplest magic items. To start, choose a spell from the player's handbook and then apply it to any non-magical item or weapon from the player's handbook, such as a longsword or leather armor. You can even apply this to more superficial items like hats or shoes. After choosing a spell and an item, let's put them together using this template. Remember to add the normal cost of the item listed in the player's handbook on top of the spell cost. Here's some items I've created as examples. Quick Runner's Shirt. This silky shirt makes you feel light on your feet. You can cast Long Strider once per long rest. Sword of the Phoenix. This sword is warm to the touch and has a winged hilt. You can cast Fireball once per long rest. Braces of the Green Grove. These braces spring to life with vines and leaves. You can cast Thorn Whip. You can use these items in your game. Remember that the higher the spell level, the more potent it is. A good rule of thumb is to only give players spells about half their class level. So a level 6 fighter would use a 3rd level spell, or a 10th level sorcerer would use a 5th level spell. When handing out these items to your players, remember that they are limited to 3 attunement slots, so they may end up adjusting their items as they level up or their circumstances change. Now when it comes to buying and selling items, typically players buy items at 100% of the price, but sell them at 50% of the price. So you'd need to sell 4 first level items to buy a single second level item, and so on. You can adjust this according to how abundant magic items are in your campaign. Advanced magic items. Are you feeling more adventurous? Want to make some more complex magic items? Let's start by using these modifiers. You can change the enhancement bonus, you can add a cantrip, you can add additional spell slots, you can add a secondary spell of a lower level, you can add metamagics. Here's some examples of some more advanced items. Cloak of the Moonless Knight. This dark smooth cloak looks almost transparent. You can cast Quickened Invisibility once per long rest. You can cast Minor Illusion. A second level spell is normally 2000 gold pieces, but because of the meta magic, it adds double to the base price, bringing it to 6000. We then add the cantrip cost. Staff of the Burning Tree. This obsidian staff crackles like a dying ember. You can cast Burning Hands three times per long rest. You can cast Produce Flame. A first level spell is normally 1000 gold pieces. However, the additional spell slots add 2,000, then 500 for the cantrip. Breastplate of the Saviour. This pearly white breastplate inspires heroic deeds. 
You can cast Distance Revivify once per long rest. You can cast Guiding Bolt three times per long rest. On this item we have two spells, so we mark down the base price for both and calculate them separately. On the item we list the highest spell level and use it for the spell attacks and DCs. Don't forget to add 400 gold pieces for the breastplate cost and its plus one bonus cost. Helmet of the Moving Mind This strange purple domed helm has an oily texture and an otherworldly sparkle. You can cast Twin Telekinesis once per long rest. You can cast Catapult three times per long rest. You can cast Mage Hand. As you can see, this item is quite potent and will cost quite a bit, but we can get more powerful. The ultimate toenail clipper of unspeakable power. This mundane, slightly scuffed toenail clipper radiates a cosmic power. You can cast Wish once per long rest. You can cast Divine Word twice per long rest. You can cast Prestidigitation. What exact toenails are these supposed to clip? Maybe the players will one day find out. I've also added some more pre-generated items to use in your campaign. Feel free to make your own, and please tell me in the comment section what sort of items you create with this system. Check the video description to find a link to this document, and good luck in making magic items for your next D&D session.